We are go for liftoff in T minus 30. Hit the record button. Welcome to another episode of Italo's Black Tech Radio. This is Italo speaking. I am um, very, very um, honored that a lot of people are reaching out to me today. And one of them is here, Dave. I'm sorry, you're, I forget your last name. Dave Conry. See you in Conry. Conry. Yeah. No worries. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I am great. I am great. I'm, uh, yeah. Like I said, I'm, it's been crazy, but uh, it's been good. <laughs> well, you know, like uh, I'm guessing people want to talk on the podcast. Like, you know, a lot of people are trying to get their uh, stories out there, right? You know, you know. Exactly. And, uh, and I think that you know, it, especially in my case, I really enjoy just talking about, you know, the the work, right? Talking about the art, talking about all that stuff. I apologize. My neighbors are getting really loud all of a sudden. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but um, we've got some party animals next door. But anyway, so, yeah, I just enjoy talking about stuff like this. So um, I'll talk right. with anybody. So. so Dave Make Things is the mm -hmm. name of your TikTok. Yeah. What, what things do you make? <laughs> that is a, that's a loaded <laughs> question. That's a, I mean, a, Excuse the mess. Um, I was hoping to do this from my office today, but uh, my wife is in there doing her phone calls and stuff like that. So uh, I do canvas work, which is this is a work in progress right here. Um, and then I paint, I paint smaller pieces. These are also works in progress, like they're just little pieces on paper. Um, I also do, I have a skateboard. I do a couple of skateboard oh, yeah. decks. I saw that. Like this, right? Um, Plus, I also do, uh, I do like merchandise, like mugs and um, there's one over there, it's out of reach, but mugs and shirts and like this is one of my shirts and, um, and things like that. So merch oriented stuff and, you know, I'm, I, I'm always trying to experiment with new stuff. And actually right now, especially over the last few weeks, I've been working, <laughs> I got a new iPad and I downloaded the Procreate app and I've dabbled in it in the past, but I've never really kind of been you know, deep in it. And so I just decided to, you know, focus on that. And so that's what I've been focusing on for the last couple of weeks. So doing a lot of digital illustration right now and turning some of that to stickers and other things. I made some stickers off of uh, the Inktober project that everybody's working on right now. And so, yeah, it's all been good. It's been good stuff. So I make a lot of things. Well, do you make time? Do I make time? I make time to make art. <laughs> <laughs> I make time to talk. This is gonna about go it. on forever. Like I could just say, uh, yeah, I can, yeah, this is gonna be a pun, pun, pun. No, but what I mean is, um, and I'm, I'm not joking now. Like, uh, like I was talking to this guy right now. I was talking to Pierre, and Pierre Woods is the the name of the, uh, you know, his name, and he's mm -hmm. on, he's also on TikTok and he's on YouTube and everything, but he's also a model and he's also an advertiser. And I'm in the advertisement business, and he's also writing a book, and he's doing all these different things. And TikTok is taking a lot of his time. Mm. <clears throat> and then suddenly he's like, "Suddenly I'm doing so much for TikTok that he's taking up my time." And I had to like, kind of like, wait a minute, you know, like yeah. time to retract. And uh, so I wonder if that's happening to you as well, like with TikTok. I, I, well, there was a period there where I felt that way for sure. Um, I felt like I was spending too much time there and not just, not just in making, but also in a lot of consumption, right? Because it's such a new platform and it's exciting. And, and so I was consuming a lot of information and, and videos or whatever on TikTok, but I pulled back on that quite a bit, mostly because of all the different things that I am doing, like not just making art, but I'm also, I'm on YouTube. I'm, um, uh, making, I'm going to be doing, uh, more live streaming on Twitch and, and I, you know, I'm always moving something around on my website for my, you know, for my work and whatnot. And so 
it's like, I've got all these different things. And so I, I just had to have a long conversation with myself to say, you know, to limit my exposure there. Like, and I don't, I, I feel kind of bad at some times because a lot of people, you know, like they spend a lot of time giving me uh, love and attention onto my videos or whatever. And I, I can't always reciprocate because I just can't spend that much time. There's so many people I've, you know, I've got, I, this, you know, I, I, I love every 15 or 14,700 people that are following me, but it's like, I can't spend for, you know, enough time to really kind of reciprocate that back to all of them. And, you know, it's like, you just have to measure it at a certain point and, you know, move, move on and be okay with it. Right. And then hopefully most people feel that way. Some people feel will get dejected by it, but I can't, I can't manage that. I've got, I've got work to do. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. And there's also, there's other things that happen in your life. Like, uh, I, I follow Jeremy. Um, I don't know if you do, but <clears throat> he's very uh, talented and he's very, he's a, uh, well, he's in TikTok. He's a comedian, but in real life, he's also a father and he's also, you know, he's had his partner and he has health issues and he has mm. th things happening in his life that not because, um, of TikTok fame that he's getting and he's also getting backlash from it. And so he has all these things that he, he had to, he had to just say, okay, you know what? Sorry guys, I, I'm going to step back here because I have a surgery happening, have coming with my son and he that he does not have leukemia. And I'm sorry I said that in another, um, podcast. I, I mean, it's not for me to say anyways, <clears throat> but the point is that, uh, yeah, there has to be a point where you has, you say, yeah, okay, stop. Yeah, and and you know, and I didn't even add that the family side to it, right? Because then there's that, right? Measuring <laughs> that, you know, I've got a ten year old boy myself, and um, yeah, especially right now because he doesn't have he doesn't he's got he, he we're still in lockdown here in California, and so he doesn't get to go to school to see his friends. Like his friends are like this is how he sees his friends in class. And it's not even a social thing. It's class, right? I mean, he does get to socialize there a little bit, but there's very little social uh, socialization and, um, you know, interaction with his friends. And so he obviously is relying on us a lot, my wife and I, to, you know, help with that. And so we're playing a lot of board games. We're playing, we're doing a lot of puzzles, right? A lot of movies, you know, you know. And together. that's great. It's, I mean, it's great because we, I haven't, I, I've been wanting to play Monopoly so bad. And nobody wants to do anything um, ex like that was back in the days. I, and I'm from the 70s uh, mm. era and 80s. So I remember those days where it was fun to get around and play cards or play Monopoly or play board games and just spend time, family quality, quality time that we don't have anymore because we have so many, so many things on social media and so many things on TV and so many things on happening. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, classic quarantine. So it's great that you're doing that. I think. Yeah, you know, I, I, I have to. Part of it is also trying. There's a balance there too because I'm trying to also instill in him a little bit of, um, uh, you know, autonomy, right? And to do, you know, be comfortable and okay with him just managing himself. You know, like when we were kids, you know. I, where we live here in Long Beach, it, you know, pretty urban city. Um, I didn't grow, I grew up in a more of a suburban area. If we didn't have something to do, right, because we didn't have the internet, we, you know, and our television was like five channels and most of them were like during the day, you didn't want to watch that stuff anyway. It's like soap operas and talk yeah. shows, you know, so we were out outside, you know, we were out riding our bikes and, you know, skateboards and playing, you know, ball or whatever. There's There's not a lot of opportunity for him there because it's like, you know, I don't want him riding around on the urban streets because people drive like idiots around here. So, but, you know, we still, we break, we make those opportunities, but um, it's like he has to, I, I want him to kind of learn to um, be okay with doing things by himself. And sometimes I think that he, he relies too much as, as uh, play playmates um, because he's got nobody else around, you know? So we, we indulge him, you know, but we also try to encourage him to do his own thing once in a while. Right. Yeah. There's so many things that we used to do, right? Um, yeah. Uh, we had we had uh, we had to find our 
a ways to entertain. I'm 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 the only I'm a, I'm an only child, so, and I was left by myself a lot. So I'm not I'm not dumping on on the podcast right now, but I'm just saying that I had to find ways to entertain myself. I was left alone for hours at a day, at a time. My mom had to work, and I was by by myself, and my dad was who know where who knows where, and so I had to find ways to. And I think that's where that's where where, where my creativity came too, right? Hmm. Um, I think I, I don't know. I'm just saying, but I think that's what that's what I spend most of the time in my, inside my head, and um, I think it was good, but. Yeah. You know, uh, and I can feel the energy right now is just so loaded that uh, I'm, I feel sorry for this generation, honestly. Yeah. Like, I wish you, you would have been there in the 70s where there were no cell phones and there were no internet and there was no drama. Yeah. Yeah, he, uh, he he's always talking about how bored he is. I'm like, man, you have no idea. <laughs> yeah. Imagine you had chef channel and you had to get right. up to get, you know, whatever. Put the ears <laughs> up, right? Like, yeah. no, just, no, no, too far. No, yeah. yeah stay right there. Stay right there. <laughs> yeah, don't exactly. move. Right. That's right. right there. And you had like one movie playing in the theater. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Those are the days. And it only played it like two times of the night, like seven yeah. and ten, right? Yeah. It's yeah. either The Shining or whatever <laughs> yeah, right. yeah that's it gremlins one day and two more weeks you know you have to wait for another three weeks for another movie yeah. you have to make the line to get into the movie theater you know yeah now we now we complain if we don't get a, a, a plush enough seat with the big enough and retracts further enough right and our soda's not you know 47 ounces or whatever yeah <laughs> we, we used to smoke in the theater Right. I mean, I can tell you so many stories, but you know what I'm saying? Like, there's, it's so much different than it was in the 70s. Yeah. 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 Anyways, uh, but yeah, I'm actually glad that you're, I, I didn't know you were in Long Beach. Actually, I'm in Van Nuys. I mean, oh, yeah, really? I didn't know Valley. that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's good that we're, I have a, not many, not many two TikTokers that I know in California. I only like know four. I know. I don't. I don't know. It's funny how most of the people that I really have come to, um, you know, get to know well on the platform are all like East Coast or North Midwest, right? Northern states or whatever, or Canada, right? <laughs> like or Canada, Canada. East yeah, Coast, that's right? That's a like that's most of the, most of the people. Like, yeah, not a whole lot. A few in, Ca in California, but not too many. Yeah, and that's what what that's why kind of what kind of pushed me to uh, Zoom because. I had somebody in uh, Canada that I wanted to do, I wanted to do a podcast with. And I had mm -hmm. to figure out, I'm like, how do I do it on the phone call? No, it's not going to work. So I'm now transitioning to Zoom. And so thank to, thanks to Corona virus, mm -hmm. I was able to have time, enough time to learn it. So that's what I'm doing now. Yeah. Yeah. And that opened yeah. a whole yeah. Pandora box because now people from Australia have people from, you know what I mean? Yeah. TikTok there you go. opening so many doors. And so yeah. sometimes I had to close it. Like, ah, wait. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like, well, you know, it's that old, old adage that, you know, the universe closes the door but opens a window, that kind of thing, right? Exactly. Yeah. So, what are some of the things that you have learned to, or how, who do you, what is your, Cause I was talking to Pierre and I was like, if you think about it, Zoom is like choosing your, the right channels. Mm -hmm. And once, once you have that frequency, you stay in, you kind of stay in that frequency, right? Yeah. So what is your frequent, what is your frequency? Because I get a lot of things on my following page as opposed to my for you page too. And so, yeah. you know, it's always a learning curve with that. It's, yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, it's interesting. Um, it, 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 well, especially, I mean, I don't know, it just depends. Like it, it, it depends on the mode. Like, I mean, every single platform that I'm on tends to almost have a different view, even though I try to lean into more creative people it, wherever I go. Right. It's just like the algorithms, especially just like kind of weird. I, I don't do a lot of zoom 
calls. Um, so it's like, I'm not talking to a ton of people there, but like, you know, if I like on TikTok, it's, it's kind of funny how even in the, uh, like the for you, it leans me into like a lot of these um, kind of Southern uh, kind of blue collar types, um, which, you know, like some of them are hilarious and other, but it's just like, I don't even know how, how TikTok knows that that was like, like, how did you get to the point with the, where it's like, that's where you want to point me. Right. So I go out of my way a lot of times to kind of seek out like the more uh, artists, right. So that there's mm -hmm. more artists in my universe and it works sometimes and it doesn't work all the time, you know, and I don't know. Yeah. It's just, the, <laughs> it, the algorithm is funny there for sure. Right. And then, yeah. you know, like, it's um i was making this joke the other day that like my audience on that platform is a, like even though tiktok and and youtube are my two main platforms right now there's also instagram but you know it, it that's yeah. kind of like a you know redhead and stepchild in the corner over there but uh um but the two the two platforms are almost like like complete opposite of each other as far as like audience like my tiktok mm -hmm. audience is like largely female and between like 35 to 55 right and then on youtube it's like largely male and like 25 to 35 right it's like all complete opposite right so i gotta that's why i'm on both channels because like oh well, like if i'm gonna hit that base i gotta go over there if i'm gonna hit that base i gotta be over there right so oh wow okay yeah. so what attracts people to your youtube channel I i'm wondering well, you know, it's interesting because I've been on that platform for a long time and it was like really stagnant for a long, for a while. And then I just, I started doing, I'm also a graphic designer by trade. And so I started doing some videos about some of the um, kind of, kind of breaking down the, the mystery of some of the programs that we use as designers, but doing so in my own style. Right. And I put out a couple of videos about Adobe InDesign, which is not the most prominent, like, I mean, designers know what InDesign is, but most people don't know what InDesign is. Yeah. So I was like breaking down InDesign, like how to use InDesign. Cause I'm a magazine, like my background is actually magazine publishing. And so I did a video like that and that got really popular. And then I did, then I moved, I transitioned from Adobe over to the Affinity products, Affinity Photo, Affinity Designer, Affinity um, Publisher. And so I've been doing a couple of videos a little bit, like just breaking down my experience as a newbie with those particular programs and coming from, coming from Adobe over to Affinity, what I like, what I don't like, those kinds of things. And those, this is all relatively new within the last year to 18 months. And those things just like, like, I mean, I'm not, I don't have a huge following on YouTube yet, but you know, like my, my subscription started going way up real fast. Mm -hmm. because of those and so okay. I lean into those a little bit now like I do a video like that every once in a while but then I also talk about making art I talk about the process of getting art into the market right because I have a I talk about um, Shopify which is the platform that I use for my mm -hmm. for my shop so I talk about that I talk about print on demand because I do a lot of print on demand like this you know this is a yeah. print on demand product okay. so okay. I talk about all that stuff um, but then I, you know, like every once in a while I'll go back to, you know, like things like somebody will ask a question about affinity and I'll go in and I'll indulge that question, you know, and that kind of brings people back around. Right. And so they, mm -hmm. they come for the, uh, they, they come for the meat, they stay for the dessert. Right. You know, like, right? yeah. <laughs> I dig it with the meat and then they like my, they like the way I, I am on camera. So, yeah. So they stick well, around. I and I haven't been to that many of your lives, but uh, the, the few times that you're there, you know, you're all the technology people. And so that's, that's what I, that's one thing that I like about TikTok is that you can engage with the artists outside of their character, because sometimes you play a character. And for those that I know, you know, some actors and some comedians and some other, even me, I'm, a, I'm sometimes I'm trying to be funny but, um, and also I'm serious. Sometimes I'm just poetic or sometimes I'm just feeling like, well, I just want to share my thoughts. And um, so, yeah, it's, it's actually better to just have a one-on-one, -on -one, in my opinion, with mm -hmm. a person like right, like right now, because sometimes with um, uh, words can be misinterpreted and misread yeah. on lives. And I've, I've gotten a few, um, red flags 
Okay. Yeah. I'm like, out. And yeah. so you learn this. You learn it, you know, you learn. I think uh, it's always uh, trial and error. It's like, okay, I know not to say this and then not to say that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's – there's always context too, right? Like uh, I actually had that happen to me just the other day, and it was only because – I was responding to a question in a way, but I was like, I was also like, I was focused on a particular thing. And so I was responding to the question, but I was also processing um, what I was doing. And so I was kind of like focused on that and answering the question. And I guess the, somebody interpreted it wrong the way I answered the question. It was like, well, I didn't mean it to be that way. Right. I didn't mean it like that. I just meant it that I was just like, you know, just the circumstances. Right. And so I think that a lot of times, you know, um, I don't know. I had to tell one friend, it's like, there's only so much I can also do to manage everybody's emotions, right? And manage everybody's um, opinions. Like I can do a certain amount. I can help manage a little, but I can't manage everybody that walks in the room. Right. Mm -hmm. So it, there's gotta be, you know, people have to take a little bit of uh, ownership on that too. And, and maybe just have number one, a little empathy for the situation. Number two, um, you know, both, both ways. Right empathy for the situation in both directions, um, you know, and just some um, recognition that, you know, not everything is, I mean, one, if one little hiccup happens, right, over the period of however long, you know, then it's like, you know, like, oh, that, that thing won't happen, I shouldn't take it so seriously or whatever. But if it's like a consistent thing that you see if somebody, well, then, okay, maybe that is a behavioral issue, right? Yeah. So, you know. <laughs> And, I, and I've, been, I've been to certain people's lives where I'm like, you're going to get it. You're going to get banned again. Because every time that you come on, you say something outrageous. Yeah. And I'm not offended much. I don't get offended. But I can see how people, certain people will, will find certain things offensive. And I'm like, you're about to get, and they do. And it's usually when I say something, I was like, oh, don't, don't do that right now. Like, you're about to get bad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So it's like, okay, you gotta like, and I'm a Libra, so I'm always like, okay, this is fine. Like, okay, I'm not even gonna get into it, but uh, there was a guy that was, it's, they call him thirst trap, thirst traps. Yeah. <laughs> and he was getting a lot of females, and he got very uh, graphic. Mm. And, That's but then, yeah, and I stayed on. I'm like, let's see where he, this guy, this, well, this, how deep the rabbit hole goes here yeah and, and i wouldn't even i'm not even gonna say it in my channel which i is, un, is unedited but man i thought i saw everything on tiktok i did not expect that last night i was like i didn't see this coming like whoa yeah. <laughs> you're not doing this on the live and so yeah that's crazy that's just crazy yeah that's you know <laughs> Like, I mean, you might as well be waving a weapon around you know like if that's just like you know it, it wasn't any, anything illegal but let's just say it wasn't appropriate for TikTok. Yeah, because how do you know who's going to pop in the room, right? You don't know because there's kids on here. You never know when a 13-year-old's going to pop in, right? I'm telling so. you. And so after that, I was like, but then then I got into the adult mode. It's like, okay, now now we're all adults here, are we? You know, and it was a point where everybody says, like, are we all adults here or is anybody underage? And yes. it got serious. It's like, is anybody underage? We want to say your your age and stuff, and so everybody agreed. Yeah, I'm I'm 40. I'm dead. so okay. We are all adults here, right? Okay, so yeah. we can do we can talk openly, right? So I think it didn't get banned, but it was like really close to getting banned. And yeah, you're but you're right. A minor came just came across it, and you're they're like, what are they doing? Yeah, it doesn't. How do you? I mean, I've gotten temporary bans in lives for doing absolutely nothing at all. Like, like literally nothing. Like at one point I got a, I got a ban just, just a couple weeks ago. Right. Um, 10 minute ban. I, oh, I was like, nothing. I was literally turning to the side. There was like, I wasn't talking. I was just turned to the side. I was like doing the, doing something. I was typing on my computer, trying to pull up some music or whatever, or check a, check a message that somebody was sending me, you know, to kind of relate to me and check it. And all of a sudden like, boop, just banned, just like that. It was like, what? <laughs> I, what did I, do? Not, yeah, I don't know it's like it happens like people go in yeah i think sometimes there's just some malicious there's also malicious people that come in and you know report a you know just instantly like they 
like all they got to do is go report and then say, you know, uh, risk to minors or whatever it is that they, the report says. And like, that's just like a, that's like an instant red flag to yeah. TikTok that are just like, shut it down. You know, I think that's why they give it a 10 minute ban. Cause it used to be like a 24 hour ban automatically, like a 10 minute ban because they want to review the information yeah, before you I go any further. Yeah. Right? That so, makes sense. Actually. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. But it's shocking, right? It's just like, I was like, my head turned and all of a sudden, ah, what, where did everybody go? <laughs> so, uh, but, uh, and another thing too, is like, we, we, we might say in our generation, right? Because we're, I'm, I'm 48 right now. <clears throat> we may say, you know, you know, Generation X is like, that's not a big deal. Yeah. But you don't know how you're really affecting somebody else, um, psyche, and, and they might be, you know, depressed, or they might be vulnerable to things and trigger warnings, you know, and so trigger words. And so you have to be kind of careful because yeah. you can be yourself, you know, unless you have a phone call one-on-one -on -one phone call, then go for it, you know? And um, that's, why, that's why I'm separating from Zoom to, I mean, from TikTok to Zoom. Okay, let's talk, let's, let's, let's do this in another platform where we know there's no children or there's no, you know, um, there's no, uh, what I'm trying to say, censorship. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's um. Well, I was thinking about that the other day. What was I? I can't remember. I came across a movie on Netflix and started to watch it with my kid because it, you know, it was like something that we watched when we were kids. And even though it was still PG thirteen by their standards, like like just the way that they would interact with each other, the things that they would say to each other, and like and like even some pretty, uh, you know, kind of like eyebrow raising, you know, racial remarks, you know, and not like dropping N words or anything like that. But I'm just like, wow. Like, I mean, I watched this as a kid and I like now, like, like my perspective on that is so much different than it was back then. Right. right. I didn't under, I, you know, maybe because number one, I didn't understand what I was really paying attention to. And number two, it's just like, it was a different world, right? It was a totally different world back then. And so, I don't know, I guess we're a lot more socially aware in that respect but yeah it's like it's it's almost uh like it's almost like there should be a there should be like a label like hey this doesn't this doesn't relate like it used to <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> well it, it could be misogynistic it could be uh yeah. you know um homophobic or it might be hate hate crime or whatever you know like american yeah. history x for instance is like yeah i was shocked at see you know what i mean like and I'm not going to say that what happens because some people might, have not, might not have seen it. Yeah. And it triggered me, but uh, I was, I was ready for it, but I was like, Whoa, Oh, that didn't just, they just, they just show it and, and the language. And so, yeah, I mean, if you're an adult, fine, you can process that, but a child. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a heavy one for sure. You know, yeah. yeah, but this was like something like simple. Like it was like even a sitcom, I think. It was like an old 80s, 70s or 80s sitcom. Just the way that they interacted with each other and other humans is just like, God, it was like so, like we just definitely took advantage of yeah. other people's sensitivities for sure back then. So, I don't know. And how was that funny, you know? I mean. Yeah, right? To today's standards, it's not funny anymore. It's like, ooh, oh, that's below the belt, you know? Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, we're evolving, I guess, in some ways. Some ways yeah. we're not. <laughs> some ways we're not. Some ways we're devolving, right? <laughs> Somebody yeah. was telling me, like, you know, we're in the 20th, 20, 20th or 21st century. I'm like, well, we're 20 years into it, and we yeah. still haven't changed. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We haven't grown that much. Yeah, not that much. Yeah. So. No. And uh, yeah, so how's the house Long Beach going on? What's what's going on there? Uh, you know, it's status quo around here. You know, we, we haven't had much change. Like ever since the second lockdown in whatever it was, June, um, we haven't had a whole lot of change. Like I mean, a little bit of change, like, you know, 
things are opening up a little bit. There's still a lot of restrictions. You have to wear a mask everywhere. There's plexiglass on everything, right? And uh, everybody's, for the most part, six feet apart. But, um, you know, we weren't one of the most heavily affected um, communities. But it's just, it has changed the way we operate, right? And I think, like, it's interesting to me because I was, my wife and I talk about this all the time, like, how is this going to change us endemically? How is it going to change us forever, and how we operate like how are restaurants like from now on like how many restaurants will you see get built with open patios instead of you know closed Mm -hmm. walls right Mm -hmm. um you know california we have that a little bit more of that flexibility because our weather's better here most of the time but Mm -hmm. like how many how often will you see that be the situation or how how much will uh working from home be a fact be a normal status quo for businesses, you know, Mm -hmm. because my work, she works for Marriott. She's large, you know, she's a remote sales for Marriott and she manages a team and she would go in every once in a while. Like she'd go to the different hotels to talk to the, the managers there. But now she's like always home. Right. And Mm -hmm. I think this is going to be the way it is for her for a while. You know, I mean, who knows exactly how long, um, and it may never, never go back to what it was before. So, right. and I think that that's probably going to affect a lot of people. So, uh, I, I don't drive it anywhere anymore. Like I don't, I don't, I have a big truck and I don't use as much gas. So that's a plus. <laughs> hey, that's a plus. Yeah, the, the, the rates were going so skyrocketing and I was doing lifts. So I was aware of the prices every day, mm-hmm. every, sometimes every hour <clears throat> yeah. it would change. So now I'm like, I don't even have to fill up my tank. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Like yeah. I might be on a red on a red dot that's about to you know like all right I can still go for two days without <laughs> yeah. going yeah, to I the am, gas station. I filled up my truck since February uh, twice, twice since February, and it's been. I mean, I'm probably at a three quarter tank, and it's been over a month. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. Great. It's great. Right. But yeah. At the same time, it's not. It's like, I want to go places. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, well, we try to avoid dr- driving long distances in my truck because I mean, then I would, then I will be spending, you know, $80 every week on gas and whatever, yeah. but you know, <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. And so I don't take it very far. I go to the post office. I go to the beach. I come home. That's about it. <laughs> hey, hey, that's good. It sounds great. Actually going to the yeah, beach yeah. whenever you want. <laughs> so, yeah. I haven't been to the beach. I've only been to the beach once, and that was in Manhattan Beach, I think. Mm. <clears throat> and, uh, and you know, during the pandemic too. So, um, and I was concerned. I'm like, do I have to keep moving? Because they were saying, you know, you have to keep walking, walking, or jogging, or whatever. If yeah. you're if you're laying down, or if you're trying to enjoy the day, and no, you have to keep moving, right? So I'm like. <laughs> Uh, do I have to? No, I don't want to, right? So I, I avoided it. And I think it was um, September, yeah, September 11th or 13th that I went. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, you know, it was enjoyable. I didn't have to wear the mask in on the beach. Yeah. I had to wear the mask, uh, whatever. And, on the path and it's still, whatever. there's still like a little bit of, uh, you know, uncomfortable. Like, what do you do if somebody comes to you and talks to you and, Ooh, put the mask on. Yeah, yeah, put the mask on real quick. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it was a. Uh, we were a little bit heavy-handed in the beginning, where it's like, oh, you can't, you got to stay moving. You can't be on that beach. You have to stay on the path. You got to stay in motion. It's like, you know, if you go, like, same in Manhattan Beach or or Redondo Hermosa, all those. There's like the path, and then there's like a hundred yards of sand before you hit the water. And there's nobody there. I was like, wait a minute. So on the path where it's like, I'm constantly walking past people, 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 I can be there, but you don't want me out on the sand where there's nobody. <laughs> there's nobody it does else, not make but sense. I can't be out there, right? I can't does not stay out sense. there. Yeah. But hopefully, I mean, we've eased up a little bit on that, at least uh, yeah. here in Long Beach. And um, I know south of us, because every once in a while we'll go south to uh, Seal Beach. Oh, yeah. Beach, Oregon, so. The Orange County is uh, awesome. Yeah, all the beaches so, there are awesome. They're a little bit more flexible down there, 
Uh, sometimes a little bit more. Like when we drove past one time through Huntington Beach, which for the anybody who is not familiar, it's like basically like a very big um, touristy surf town uh, here. And uh, it was a busy weekend. Um, and it just we're sitting at the stoplight, the main stoplight right by the pier. And just hundreds of people going by like mm -hmm. on in one turn of the light hundreds of people going by with no masks everybody in close proximity you look down on the beach and there's just like thousands of people down there all really close to each other down there on the beach and it's like yeah. no wonder that no wonder orange county is blowing up in viruses you know virus counted and this was back in yeah, this was like I saw it on the news. Yeah, June, July, something like that. I don't remember. It was like after it was after Memorial Day weekend, but I was like thinking to myself, like oh, these guys are, these guys are crazy, yeah. right? So we don't go there for that spot at all. We go to the more remote beaches, right, <laughs> where we can get some yeah. distance between us. But yeah, no, yeah, wow. you, can't, you can't keep me away from the beach. I'm a, I'm a beach. I've been a beach kid all my life. Can't keep me away from it. Yeah. And uh, and I'm also thinking of the the prides right in Long Beach. <clears throat> what's going to happen to Long Beach Pride? What's going to happen to everything that the AMC? I think I, I heard they're closing their business and they're renting it for ninety nine dollars. And I'm like, whoa, that's yeah. awesome. But yeah. no, it's not because they're going away. And oh my goodness. Yeah. Well, they uh, so they canceled Pride this year. Um, which was interesting because I was going to take my boy to go see it for the first time because he'd never been to the parade. I just wanted him to kind of get that <laughs> exposure. But um, uh, I don't know. We'll see what they do next year. You know, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, they canceled Pride. They canceled the Long Beach Grand Prix. I mean, that was all April, <laughs> you know, May and all that. So it's like, you know, it's all a, it's it basically that was early on right so they kind of like everything got yeah you know asked yeah. right every every event we have these things called beach streets which is basically they close down the streets and everybody goes and rides their bikes around you know because they close down the streets but and then they have uh stuff in downtown long beach where they close down the main drag there and they put concerts on live concerts and those all got canceled so mm -hmm. it's been an interesting year so we'll see what they do next year this coming year i mean the city's obviously got to start some planning on that so we'll see right yeah. All right, uh, Dave, uh, it's been wonderful. Uh, I, I'm glad that we connected on TikTok. And now yeah. that I, that you live in Long Beach, and I know that you're what you're doing, uh, what you're making. I'd like you to make me something, actually, at some point when everything goes back to normal. But we have less than a minute, guys. So I do want to thank Dave, and I do want to thank everybody for listening. I'm going to post all the information, his information below, all, all the, you know, um, what I'm trying to say, social, and links and all that stuff. Yeah, links and yeah, um, there's a word for it. Handles, handles. Okay. Handles. So once again, thank you, Dave, <laughs> and we'll be talking soon. All right. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. We are go for liftoff in T minus thirty. Hit the record button.